Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. You are listening to Keep Canada Weird, a weekly weird news roundup by the Nighttime Podcast. Handsome Aaron Airport. How are you doing over there? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's been a busy, busy little while for me. Uh, Lots of uh, uh, projects on the go. So I've been uh, losing sleep and taking names. You're working nights. And days. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's hectic. It's hectic. Mm, you made it. So let's get on with it here. We got matching Robin's Donuts mugs. What's in yours? In my Robin's Donuts mug is something different. Oh. Something that might surprise you. Something that you least expect. Do you want me to guess? or? Yeah, you... take a guess. Uh, a fruit juice. No, no, no. Okay. Take another guess. What is it? No, take another guess. Uh, a... Uh... Just like a regular beer. No, no. Like a hockey game beer. No, no. I'm not a regular Joe. A cup of water. You're right. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking water today. I'm drinking water. Yeah. I didn't I looked in the fridge. There was there was nothing really to like nothing inspiring. In there. Yeah, yeah. I just really felt underwhelmed when I looked in there. Um so I uh I went to the tap. Okay. Well straight from the tap. Good. Good. Just like our conversation tonight, straight from the tap, unrehearsed, unfiltered, uh, maybe a little bit chlorinated. Let's start with a voicemail, though, before we get into this week's weird stories. In past episodes, you've called out to listeners to send in hate mail towards me. I hope that ends tonight, but, but before we talk about that, let's hear from a listener named Andrew from Victoria, who does have a little bit of a beef with me. Here's what Andrew has to say. What's up, weirdos? This is Andrew from Victoria, British Columbia. I couldn't resist the opportunity to send in some criticism of Jordan walking hypocrisy Bonaparte. Likes to talk so much crap about Tim Hortons, but by the sounds of it, he eats breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. Aaron Airport, you have grown on me and you may even elicit the occasional chuckle. Anyways, um, Jordan, send me some swag, and I won't let Robbins know how much Tim Hortons you consume on a daily basis. Sue me. Yeah, yeah, you do go there every day. I also... Let's be honest. I also like their egg bites. That's the egg bites? <laughs> yeah, No, Tim's. no, they don't sell egg bites. That's a Starbucks. No, Tim's does too. I don't eat carbs, so I go... No. Okay. They do. Just for they anyone, don't. I'm editing out your voice. For anyone listening, they do sell them. I buy them all the time. <laughs> oh, because you're there every day. <laughs> Andrew has a good point. Uh, uh, the, the ones around me, I've never, not that I'm in them very much, but I've never seen an egg bite advertised or anything from Tim okay, Hortons. Well, it's being promoted now on Keep Canada Weird, thanks to your skepticism. No, thanks to your hypocrisy, as our friend Andrew said. Yes. Um, but um, Does Andrew like the show? It sounds like he doesn't like really either of us. Apparently, I've eventually grown on you him. You grew but... on him, <laughs> yeah. And there, there is more to Andrew's voicemail. We're going to be bookending this episode, starting with Andrew. We're going to be finishing with him as well. He has, okay. a little bit, okay. he has a little bit more to say. He's going to serve as a correspondent later in the show. But... Already, I can feel some tension between us. That's why I want to pass the mic to a listener named Kelly. She has an interesting offer for us, and I think we should take it. Here's what Kelly has to say. My name is Kelly, and I'm calling from New Orleans, Louisiana. First of all, I love you both. And this, um, what do I want to call it? Hate mail, tit for tat is just really tearing me apart. So I am actually calling to ask you to call a ceasefire. And now I'm not saying that you don't both don't uh, sometimes aggravate me, annoy me, make me mad. But by the end of the episode, you have always redeemed yourself. So for that reason, I'm asking, please call off the hate. It's just it's too much for me to take. So I guess that's it, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Um, 
I would love actually for some nighttime merch as I don't yet have an opinion on Robin's Donuts. So if that's a possibility, no, I would love to advertise your wonderful show way down here in the Bayou State. Um, and that's it, guys. Thanks a lot. Uh, keep Canada weird. Love the show. So I think Kelly has a point. What I think is people are coming to the show to hear in-depth analysis of the unique and offbeat Canadian news stories. I don't want the color of that to be misrepresented mm -hmm. by our featuring of hate mail against each other. I understand that you took the brunt of the hate mail early on in the show. You flipped the script. I've been getting it the last few weeks. You want to call it a ceasefire? Yeah. Well, I specifically, I was the only one that specifically asked people to call in with hate mail directed towards you. Yeah, you. So you never, you never asked them to do, they just naturally sent in hate mail for me. That was a natural organic occurrence that mm -hmm. occurred. Um, you weaponized but that. I. Yeah, yeah, I weaponized it. <laughs> and I did it because of, you know, the this, this story selection recently um, where I wasn't getting any good animal stories uh, that might specifically feature cats and dogs, uh, but really any kind of delightful animal stories is, is to make me feel good. Um, I, anyway, I haven't called it off yet. I'm going to be honest because it's going to take that magic story okay. for me to do it. I got you tonight. I'm sure of it. It's not necessarily okay. a cat or a dog, but I got a good one. But before right. we get into animal stories, why don't we go to a birthday party? That's something we've celebrated a couple birthday parties on this show. Never for either of us, but we did go to, if I remember once upon a time, it was like a 104-year-old woman's birthday party. And she like slept mm -hmm. through it, but it was still on the news. <laughs> uh, we have another birthday party tonight. I'm excited about this one. It, it ties into a few different things. You and I often complain about social media trend influencing the worst our society has to offer. This story coming out of Nanaimo, BC is going to be a breath of fresh air. A social media trend was the inspiration for what I think is a wonderful birthday celebration. Listen to the story of the Costco birthday party surprise. We should bring your parents some food. It doesn't take much to get Aaron Reynolds into Costco. I do this every week. I go through every <laughs> aisle and I look at everything. <laughs> a routine that inevitably ends like this. Do we really need it? Yeah, yeah, that's the classic. But if there was one thing Reynolds' wife, Carissa, doesn't need to question, it was how she planned on celebrating an upcoming milestone. I saw it on TikTok about a year ago, and I just kept that idea in the back of my mind for his next birthday. The idea behind the post that went viral with more than 11 million views is simple. A surprise party at Costco. This doesn't make sense. With the venue set, invitations were quickly followed by RSVPs. We are a Costco-loving family, so mm -hmm. that was no problem. Getting her husband through the doors, well, it's been established, that's the easy part. She had said that we just had to grab a couple things last minute um, that she had forgotten the day before. And I love Costco. It's so good. <laughs> With everyone scattered throughout the store, Aaron runs into one person, then another. My mom and dad are right over here. And another. Oh my God. Carissa rushing him through the aisles, expecting he's going to catch on. I was downplaying. You were down, and so I was just like, oh, okay, well, I'll see you guys later. And then I would run into the next person. And the next. All within the last five minutes. Well, you get the idea. I really, truly thought that the surprise was going to be short-lived, but we made it through all 20 people, and he had no idea. Do you really think this is a coincidence? And so she had no choice. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> but to spoil her own surprise. Oh. It's the best day ever. It's so funny to look back on now because I just, it, it seems so obvious, but I was just so swept up in the, in the moment of it. And it was awesome. The guests dined on hot dogs and pizza from the concession, topping the evening off with a slice of Costco carrot cake. And now with the shock of it all wearing off, it's Aaron. Who's asking the questions? How do I top this? Um, He's got a year until yeah. Yeah, my birthday. Stay tuned. <laughs> like I said before we started that, oftentimes like the social media stuff, I find it uh, like kind of cringy and insincere. 
Uh, this did it for me. I thought that was a great idea, wonderfully executed, and uh, mm -hmm. and it's simple. I often think, you know, whenever there's a special event or whatever coming up, I'm, I often get overwhelmed by the planning and the preparation. An idea of having a birthday party in this way, that's that's kind of would be my style, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely, I know you and I both love going to the mall in general. Yeah. Uh, I could see you having a surprise party thrown for you at a mall. I'd be just, fine with that. Know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'd be totally fine with that. And that's one of your happy places. Yeah, it's true. But the, the problem is in my case, as these different people approached, I'd be like, cover my eyes, put my head down. Like, I just want to chill mm -hmm. at the mall. I don't want my whole family's here. <laughs> You're just there to drink Tim Horton's coffee. Yeah. And... <laughs> And just dive in their egg bites. <laughs> but I, I thought it was a cool idea. The guy in the story, Aaron, uh, is his name as well. Um, it did surprise mm. me that he didn't catch on. He's like, my parents are here and all my friends. There was 20 people invited at this Costco. And he thought it was just like a, a huge coincidence that all his closest friends and family were, <laughs> were there. It wasn't until like the mm. very end that she like had to tell him. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Good for him. Um, how I was trying to listen to the story. Did they mention how long this couple has been together? No, I don't think they did. But why? why Cause I'm kind of curious cause they, they seem like they're a couple that's only been together maybe for two, three years or something. Do you get that vibe? Uh, I never even thought about it. I don't know what that vibe feels or sounds like. Uh, they're definitely uh -huh. going all out for birthdays. And I think a couple typically that's been a, a, together for a long period of time, that probably slows down in your 10th, 15th year together. But Yeah, yeah. So I think I, I have a feeling and a theory that they are a couple that, you know, maybe three years they've been together. Uh, and the Costco thing is still in its cute phase with her. Okay. You know, she sees him going to Costco every week. He always wants to go to Costco. Any free time he has, he wants to go to Costco. And early in the relationship, it's cute, and she celebrates it. But I guarantee five years from now, mm. she's going to be like, he doesn't even spend any more time with me. He's just always at Costco. Oh, well, that's there's worse. He says problems. he's working late. I find him at Costco. At Costco. I look at his bank account. Yeah, Costco, Costco, Costco. Uh, I was actually yeah. at Costco tonight. Uh, well, this evening, this afternoon. I thought of the story while I was in there looking at the random people walking around. I didn't see anyone I knew, so nobody threw like a surprise Halloween party for me at Costco. In fact, it wasn't even very Halloween-y there. It was full-on Christmas yeah. at Costco today. Well, my prediction for these two is just as their, you know, their early love flourished at Costco but I predict they will break up at Costco. I think she likes going to Costco with him. I think you're getting it all wrong. I think they enjoy walking through Costco together, getting samples. I think she, I think she again, right now she finds it cute, but I think in, in five years, she's going to hate Costco and hate him and they're done. They'll split up their membership. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I uh, think so. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a follow-up story. If we hear of uh, the Costco divorce party, we know who's there. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, and I, and, and that should be covered on the news too. I think so. Do you have a, a, a preference for your birthday? Like we, you said, uh, we, you know, we both enjoyed the mall. We'd be cool with like a mall birthday party. I picture you more of a birthday host party kind of guy. Um, I, I just like doing something really simple for my birthday. I like some pizza, some cake, and I like to go to bed early. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm big on birthdays because this weekend is uh, one of my kids' birthdays. And uh, so we, we got like birthdays on the mind here. Do you know what a yes day is? Have you ever heard of this concept? No. Okay, it's something new. A yes day is something kids will talk about. They'll ask their parents for a yes day. That's a day where you have to say yes to everything your kid asks for or asks to do. So I've promised uh, my child a yes day this weekend, which generally for me means going to the candy store, going to the arcade, and buying them like a video game or something. And on daddy's yes day, they just go to Tim Hortons over and over again. But they're with their father, the hypocrite. Mm -hmm. um, on that note, let's take a short ad break. When we get back, I got back to back stories about animals, not cats and dogs. Nobody is hurt. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I think there's like 80 animals killed in the next segment. We'll hear about that after the break. Yeah.
Aaron, we have spent months, if not years, exploring that thin line between human civilization and the natural world. In fact, this work led to Keep Canada Weird breaking the international story of the animal uprising phenomenon. Well, I'm happy to share with you a positive development from that battleground. They say nature is the great adapter, always finding new ways to maintain balance. Well, a human being in Vancouver's unique engineering project may be the next step in a peaceful solution to the human-animal conflict. Here's the story of a knockdown fence and a doggy door for bears. Here it comes. For residents of the North Shore, wildlife is always close by. Just ask Kurt Chiwi. He has broken it down probably a dozen times and I've gone back and fixed it in past years. Look around North Van and you'll find fences torn apart by bears. Shiwi just got a new fence installed, but within a couple of days he had showed up like five in the afternoon and just knocked that panel right out. In a Hail Mary attempt to stop the costly damage, Shiwi built this custom bear door in his fence. To his surprise, it worked. Sure enough, two weeks later, he comes walking down the driveway and walks right through it like he'd done it a thousand times. He doesn't have any attractants on his property. It just happens to be on a popular path for bears traveling to and from the Seymour River. They're in our yard from June to November, two to three times a week. The weight of the door was a big concern for Kurt. He didn't want it light enough that a raccoon could get through or even his family dog, so he made it heavier, but it's still easy enough to get through, especially if you're a bear. Even with the networking that we do with other bear groups, all across Canada and the United States. I've never seen anything like this before. A novel idea the North Shore Black Bear Society hopes will catch on. Bears adapt to us and they show us every day that they can live peacefully with us. So it's just so nice to see residents going that extra step. Reisner says black bears are fattening up right now, eating 20,000 calories a day ahead of hibernation. To minimize unwanted encounters, it's important to keep anything edible, including pumpkins, away from them. At first, the hinges from Rowan, it didn't really work. The door was too heavy, so put some copper pipe through. Shiwi says he's by no means a handyman, but is happy to share his design with anyone wanting to save their fence. I think that's a positive animal story. Yeah, I agree. I, I really like this one, and... At first, I was nervous when I first started listening to the story. I was like, oh, don't tell me they're feeding the bears and the bear lives in their yard and all these kind of things. But then once the story played out, I was like, oh, this sounds like actually a really good idea for the bears to be able to comfortably pass through some of the fences and obstructions and their <laughs> paths yeah. to fattening themselves up. It's just all about kind of like sharing the land with them. And, you know, the bears were there before this guy built his house. There's that, as they described in the article, there's like a path that the, the bears kind of follow to get to this lake or whatever. He builds his fence there. And after the bears tear it down a couple of times, this, I think this solution, I think is a, is a positive one. And it's like you and I discussed a ceasefire at the beginning of the episode. I think it's steps like this that could lead to a ceasefire between the uh, human animal conflict that's playing out in towns and cities all across this country. I think people could take a lot a, a lesson from this guy. Too little, too late. The uprising will continue and, but keep building those bear doors because you might as well, maybe that bear will have that particular bear will have some mercy on you personally. But uh, if the bear doesn't get you, then the rest of the animals will. He says he has bears coming through his yard two or three times a week. To me, that's terrifying, but I guess he knows what he's doing and he protects himself. But uh, I'm happy for this guy to find this creative solution. Yeah, it sounds like he keeps his yard clean, so he Certainly. doesn't have to worry about the bears really going after anything in his yard. They just, they're going to be passing through whether the fence is there or not. Yeah, so, so I guess it's just let them get through and, you know, he's, he's yeah. careful to not leave pumpkins or whatever out for them to eat or garbage somewhere and they just move through and yeah i guess it's it kind of comes with the territory if you live in bear country uh with the views and the access to fresh water and everything else uh comes bears yeah yeah you gotta bear the bears uh, i want to play another voicemail here uh before we get to the next story this one involves pets it's a listener named melvin who 
has a bit to say about something you said last week. When we talked last week about the clown collar that some people were putting on cats to protect um, uh, songbirds and whatnot from from the cats, uh, you had a few things that that you said related to like you know letting cats, uh, letting nature take its course, letting cats run wild if they're going to be oak, outdoor cats. Don't play God with them. We heard from a few listeners who uh, who had an issue with uh, with those with those statements. Uh, here's what Melvin had to say about it. Hello, handsome Aaron Airport and bus stop Jordan Bonaparte. My name is Melvin. I'm from Pictou County, Nova Scotia. Um, after listening to the most recent episode of Keep Canada Weird, I just had to send in a message. I know I'm supposed to be hating on Jordan today, but it was actually a comment by Aaron that sort of has my blood boiling. Um, Aaron stated that it's uh, a natural thing for house cats to be outside and to satisfy their instinct to kill by killing birds. But the truth is that uh, the house cat is an invasive species. They're not supposed to be a part of nature here. Um, The American Bird Conservancy states that in the U.S. alone, 2.4 billion birds are killed by house cats every year. That sounds like a high number, but it's because tens of millions of cats are out roaming around every single day. In Canada, up to 350 million birds per year are killed. That's a lot. There are 63 species of birds, mammals, and reptiles that are extinct, with a major cause being predation by house cats. To say that it's natural for people to let their cats outside and kill birds um, it's like saying that it would be just a natural thing for the zoos to open all their doors and let the alligators and tigers and lions and pythons out and let them go on murderous rampages uh, simply because, you know, they have the innate desire to kill. It's just nature taking their course. But the truth is they're not supposed to be here. Finally, I just want to ask the rhetorical question that what if Robin from Robin's Donuts was murdered by a house cat. What alternative would then remain to Tim Hortons? There would be none. So bottom line, if you do let your cat outside, put a bell on it, save the lives of uh, millions or billions of our beautiful birds. Damn. <laughs> that got dark mm. at points. I think Melvin made a few good points there. I never thought of the idea, the, the fact that you know, domesticated cats are kind of like an invasive species. I wouldn't use the word invasive. I would use uh, welcomed. Or pre- welcomed species. A precious you know? species. Yeah, yeah. It seems like uh, Melvin's a bird boy. <laughs> uh, but I am a cat king. And I have a beautiful, handsome, strong... A uh, majestic beast that lives with me called Ken Tiggs. So uh, cats over birds. I don't care how much hate mail I get over that statement. Yeah. I stand by it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I knew you would. I have no problem with birds, you know, but Melvin, he made it personal. And here we are. The lines are drawn and I have to choose a side. So I choose cats. <laughs> um Let's move on here. We have another story related to animals. This is going to be catching up with something we talked about last week. In our last episode, we discussed the Kanata, Ontario neighborhood that was overrun by huge screaming rats. And we discussed the belief that these rats were able to reproduce to such great numbers as a result of an extreme hoarder situation. Well, there's been an update in this story. And it gives, and this update is going to give us a first-hand look at what happens in stories like this, stories of extreme hoarders. We're going to hear a little bit of news coverage about the team tasked with cleaning out this house. Ugh. Get ready for this one. I hope you're not eating while you're listening. I'm just drinking water. Dead rats still on the front lawn of this property in South Canada. A community group stepping in to help with the rat infestation. Paul caught about 
14 every day last week and so today we found about two or three which is actually good when you think about the massive and how many rats were from the beginning. The owner was forced to bring in pest control and clean up the property after multiple complaints to police, bylaw, Ottawa Public Health and city councillors. The owner also accepting help from the volunteer group for the cleanup of thousands of items that the owner was hoarding. Couldn't get the door fully open to step in. It was that full. Put together a team, um, put a bit of a budget together, made a proposal, and, uh, and uh, the onus was on starting it as soon as possible. It was a big job with rats running wild throughout the property and trash piled up. The cleanup still underway. Removed approximately 23 tons of various things from the place. Um, disposed of about 50 to 70 rats while we were uh, removing things. The owner's family was at the property on Saturday and didn't want to appear on camera, but those involved in the cleanup say they are getting a better picture of what happened here. This is an unfortunate business loss after COVID. Um, so the business owner and his family, they were part of the community and they were selling um, little goods and things like that and they lost everything. And when they moved, they had nowhere else to put it. If the owner did not comply with the cleanup, bylaw says a situation like this could carry a fine up to $100,000. It turns in my stomach the idea of just like going through a house full of garbage and just finding like I think they said like 50 to 60 dead rats mixed up in all that. That is just disturbing and I also don't buy the explanation that this was a business loss after COVID because the video, if you look at the yeah, news I clip, think they made a, I think they made a point something that like they had all this stuff after they lost the business or something, and then they just kind of brought it into the house. Yeah, they that, well, what they said, and I'll do my best to say it verbatim is, um, the member of the volunteer group that's helping clean out this house said this is an unfortunate business loss after COVID. They they had a business of selling small items and things like that and then when their business closed down they had nowhere to put it so they brought it all in the house but when it but when you look at the video of what's in the house it just looks like garbage bags and boxes of crap so unless their business was by little things that they're selling is like you know like flea market items or something and they had tons of it it, it just looks like a pile of garbage and whatever it had it's, it wasn't like inventory that was reusable because this all goes to the dump like they got you know whatever they said 15 tons of this stuff out of there so i yeah i don't know if that's a fair explanation it does at least that's not what looks like ha what is in that house based on the news clips i think it does if their small business was selling rats mm, or like rat uh, attractants yeah yeah we sell we sell just small cubes of cheese mm -hmm. and then COVID happened and Oh. Nobody wanted to eat cheese anymore. <laughs> so he brought it all in the house. Three years later, this neighborhood is, people are hearing yeah. rats screaming in their walls. We want more cheese. Ugh. It's a, uh, yeah. You ate all of our cheese. Our COVID cheese is gone. <laughs> um, all we have are empty boxes and mattresses, please. Oh, gross. This thing with like a, a hoarder, I mean, I first learned of this concept when that TV show came out. It, this was probably like 15 years ago or something. There was like a TV show about hoarders and every episode was, it was on, I think, A&E. Every episode was like a different hoarder and them helping the TV crew, like helping them clean up their house or something. It seems like the, the concept of a hoarder was kind of normalized around that time when the show came out. But now I hear about it all the time. This seems to be a common thing of, of like a hoarder. Yeah, I'm trying to move in the opposite direction in my life. Uh, I've been reducing down to just the bare necessities. Mm -hmm. Couch, bed, small kitchen table, TV. You're doing like I, the... I, and I have a desk here. I've got a desk. Yeah, you're and, like a college and, student. And I love it. Yeah, well, um, the, the simplicity is nice. I, I love coming into a room and having everything in its right place. It's clean. It's organized. It's fresh. I love that. Um, the idea of going into a house where there's like just stuff everywhere to me, that that's what triggers my stress. 
I get stressed out if my yeah. house is messy. If I even with my podcast, if I'm going to like edit an episode or work on something or read an article and do some research, if the room I'm in isn't spotless, I am useless. I need to clean it. I could never be a hoarder. I'd be the crankiest person on the planet. But I think once you reach a certain point and you just let go, then that's when the hoarding takes over. Mm. So some maybe things slowly build up over time and you're starting to lose control. And then you eventually just let go. And then you're like, you know what? Just let it build surround up. me and smother me. And I'm just going to lay here and die. Yeah. I have a I have a bit of an issue with collecting stuff. Like I I I sort of hoard on a minor scale with like buying things that make me happy, but I, I have a spot for everything. And I also have a storage room in my house where I just pile stuff in, but not pile it in like a hoarder would. There's shelves and everything's in its right place. Um, I just, I just, yeah, I can't, uh, I can't imagine it. I don't know why that story made me think back to when we lived in Halifax and you just had like a bunch of blankets in the corner. Remember that? You didn't have like a mattress or a bed or anything. Yeah. I slept on the floor for years. Yeah. Until I ended up moving from Halifax and I had this old beat up thin little like floor mattress thing. <laughs> and you asked if you could have it when I moved. And it's like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and you thought yeah. you were just king of the castle with that crappy thin mattress on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, I slept for a while there. I slept on a, a comforter that was kind of just like folded up a few times. So it was like a, yeah, yeah. a, a half an inch of padding. <laughs> yeah, and then you gave me your old mattress. I forgot about that. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, no I've problem. I do thank you for want it back, though, now that you have a bed. <laughs> All right, we'll talk. Do you want to read an ad? Make one up? Uh, yeah. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Crappy Thin Mattresses. Uh, if the rats don't get you, the mattress will. Uh, do you got a promo code for it? Promo code uh, Jordan Timms. <laughs> Okay, this next segment here, we're going to call it our stu our dumb Canadian crime segment. We haven't done this in a while of uh, kind of like um, collecting and featuring uh, a series of dumb, bizarre Canadian crime stories. Tonight, we're going to do it. The fact that retail theft is on the rise in Canada is nothing new, but this story is going to be unique. A video being circulated online shows staff of a Richmond, B.C. frozen yogurt shop dealing with a shoplifter who gets caught in the act. You've probably heard theft referred to as the five-finger discount. Well, it takes more than five fingers to scoop ice cream. So here's the story of the whole hand discount. That is not an employee behind the counter at Timothy's in Steveston. Get out of the store, sir. I will. Caitlin Seek filmed the video. She works at a nearby deli. I couldn't really see, like, hear what he was saying, but he was just mumbling about how he wanted ice cream. And what shocked me was that he actually went to the ice cream, like, counter and scooped it with his hand. Seek says on Wednesday afternoon, the lone employee at Timothy's came over to her store and told her a man who had caused previous issues at Timothy's was back and sitting outside. So I told her, let's go close down and you come over here, wait till your boss shows up. And right when we came around the corner here, we actually saw him behind the counter rummaging through. And that's when I just walked in and said, okay, dude, you need to go. No, get out of the, get store, out of the store. There are police are on their way. After making his cone, the man left the shop without incident. Eyewitnesses say police did eventually show up. Multiple attempts by Global BC to contact Richmond RCMP were unsuccessful. I could completely relate to what that girl, the employee, was dealing with. She was crying, and of course you would. It's scary, because you do feel vulnerable, and you do feel like there's that level of societal norms that get broken when someone's acting like that. The incident caused Timothy's to close down early for the day. Management did not respond to our request for comment. As for the manhandled tub of gelato... We just ruined a little bit of ice cream which was gross. <laughs> we ended up taking the ice cream and putting it in the, in the garbage. We're like, all right, we'll never gonna touch that again. There's a, a few unwritten rules in society that this man broke, breached. One of them is you don't, like your, your hand shouldn't touch ice cream. We always use a utensil to bring the ice cream from 
its storage area to your mouth. You could use a cone, you could put it in a cup with a spoon. There's no situation where you dip your hand into something and take a handful of ice cream. And he even stuck it on a cone. Like he took a cone, took a handful of ice cream, put it on and walked out of the store. This guy's a maniac. Yeah, he could have gotten away with it if he didn't involve the cone because he could have argued, oh, I burnt my hand and I and I needed some cold Ice. relief. I needed something. Mm. Um and maybe had a case his hand in the ice in in the gelato. Gelato or frozen yogurt. I've seen it referred to yeah, as Yeah, I think they just referred to it in the I was listening closely in the article. They did say I think it's they were calling it a frozen yogurt shop, but the actual thing he dipped his hand in was gelato. Okay, because often you go to a shop like that and they'll have some ice cream, some frozen yogurt, and then a couple types of gelato. It just so happened, I think it was the gelato he stuck his hand in. Uh, but but you got a good point. If, you're, if your hand is hurt and burnt and you need ice, the gelato or ice cream would work. But when you introduce a cone into that, a cone is recreational. That's for pleasure. That's not for business. I agree. Um, I agree. He and I think that's going to come that. back to bite him in court. Yeah, he should have just walked out with the handful of, of gelato outside, ate it, and then just pleaded, I had a burnt hand. What else was I to do? <laughs> I do like the eyewitness account that we hear in that news clip is that he, he came in and he was mumbling something about wanting ice cream. <laughs> I think that's just like theater for the mind. He's like, oh, no, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. And just like a zombie walks behind the counter and takes a handful of it. Uh, I, I do also, though, I, I empathize with that worker. I would feel vulnerable and uncomfortable. As silly as it is to hear this story, there is something kind of frightening about this guy looking disheveled, going behind the counter without any fear of the people saying, like, get out of here, stop it. Mm -hmm. no, that's uh that's not cool yeah hey, that's a kind of a pun was that intentional Ooh, that's no it wasn't cool. yeah yeah no, that's ice cold <laughs> yeah that's yeah ice cold. uh we've yeah. covered a lot of stories of food and pastry theft we've talked about stolen butter at one point we're now talking about this uh gelato we talked about the, the uh, stolen butter tarts butter tarts that's right and uh, th there's probably a bit more than that. But it's, oh, I'm it's sure there's a few more, yeah. It's interesting how these stories, man, like how uh, certain threads of stories and storylines kind of form when you focus on weird Canadian news. But uh, I, I always enjoy a dumb criminal. This guy is brazen and stupid. He did get busted. The article didn't say it, but not long after, the police uh, arrested him Police took him in custody for reasons unrelated to this incident with the gelato. No real surprise that the guy who did this also is in trouble for other oh, reasons. Oh, of course. It was arson. So he probably started a fire, burnt his hand, and then went to the ice cream store mm. and dipped his hand in the gelato and then he's like, well, I'm not going to let the ice cream go to waste and just melt on my hand. So I'll use the cone, put it on there and enjoy the rest of the ice cream after cooling my burnt hand from setting that building on fire. And then he leaves and then they catch him um, and, for, and the for the fire, for the arson. Oh, man. And now he's just up to his neck in it. Um, we got our last story of the night. And this one is going to come to us from a correspondent. Earlier, he uh, called me a hypocrite because I have too much Tim Hortons that I hate. Now he's going to share a historical story of a dumb Canadian criminal in Victoria. Here's what Andrew has to say. On another note, uh, hopefully you guys are interested in some historical weird news. Uh, this dates back from 2018, but I think it bears revisiting and we could use your insight and analysis. In 2018, Victoria, British Columbia, cyclist defecates, throws own poop at car in Victoria. <laughs> Police are on the lookout for a cyclist who threw his own feces at a woman in a car. Following a collision on Yates and Cook Street, the cyclist pulled down his pants defecated in public and threw his own feces at the woman who had locked herself 
in her own car. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say about this. I remember it as if it happened yesterday, hearing this on news radio. Um, and now I'm shocked to find there's a video where you can see most of this play out. Um, and the uh, feces flinger is potentially still at large. I see no follow-up to this story. I know it's ages ago, but uh, we need to keep our eyes out. I looked it up. This is a, a story of something that happened. It seems like a guy on a bike maybe got hit by a car or rubbed up against by a car. And his reaction is to jump off his bike, uh, defecate on the ground, and pick it up and throw it at the front windshield of the car. I, I read a little bit about it looking for an update, and I didn't find anything, but I did find a great comment. Uh, someone on Reddit said, what really startles me was the swiftness with which he pulled down his pants and laid down his weapon of choice. This is probably not his first rodeo with this. No, it doesn't sound... Well, I mean, I have kind of an explanation as to how he was able to do it so quickly. What could that be? So this guy's cycling. He's he's probably was somewhere, say he was at work, and he rides back and forth to work on his bicycle. So he's leaving work, and then, you know, as sometimes when nature calls, it can be an emergency. So in the midst of a conflict. Not in the midst, no. So he's he's like, oh, my God, I've got to get home as fast as possible. I have to go to the bathroom so bad. It's coming. So then he's he's cycling as quick as he can, maybe as safely as he can, but considering the fact he's like, I've got to get home, I've got to get home, and all of a sudden runs into this woman. Maybe it was her fault. Um, and then he's like, well, it's coming out, so I'm just going to throw it at her because it's her fault. So then that's what happened. Uh, it's interesting where some, some of the articles that I found, they referenced this to be the second feces throwing related story in British Columbia within like a couple months period. This actually, this incident that we're talking about here in Victoria with the bike and the bicyclist throwing feces happened just a few months after uh, a viral video that went around where a woman was denied entry to a bathroom at a Tim Hortons. So ah, she yeah, yeah. defecated in Tim Hortons and threw it at the worker. Um, you should never yeah. get angry at somebody who has to use the bathroom. No, no. I think that's the real lesson here because whether it's number one or number two, it can be aimed at you. It can be weaponized. Mm -hmm. and, and this person, like someone who's on the brink of wetting themselves or using the bathroom in their pants, that's, a, that's someone who has nothing to lose. They're backed into a corner already. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so I just say be careful who you cross because they might have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that's a it's a great uh, great lesson to learn, and, and it's better to learn it here, listening to keep Canada weird, than learn it out there in the field the hard way. <laughs> All right, I think we've been through enough tonight, Aaron. We can put a bow on this. Uh, we got to get preparate. We got to get into our Halloween preparation. Our next episode, we're going to be recording on the twenty ninth of October, just days before Halloween. Uh, this this season so far, we've been slow on Halloween stories. So hopefully next week we can – hopefully the Canadians really turn it up next week and we can have some weird Canadian Halloween news. Yeah, I hope so. It's um, I'm not suggesting that the rest of this month gets scary, but uh, but certainly more festive in the news stories. I would like to see that. Yeah, if anyone out there has any uh, ideas or any thoughts on Halloween that they'd like to share with Keep Canada Weird Nation, send us a voicemail. I'd like to hear about some memorable costumes, maybe what you're going to be this year. Um, if you even want to just talk about trick-or-treating and how many kids you get to your house every year, like uh, I'd listen to that. Yeah, or some nostalgic get memories of when you trick-or-treated as a child. And the type of candy that you love, the type of candy that you hated, what you did to the house that gave you the candy that you hated, uh, who you egged, who you toilet papered, yeah, you know, all those things. 
Uh, I like it. If you want to send us a voicemail, go to nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. And if your voice is aired on the show or if your voice was aired in this show, send me your address at nighttimepodcast at gmail.com. And I'll send you the official Keep Canada Weird correspondent badge, which is no longer a sticker. It is now a pin that is removable. I just ask you to you wear it. I just ask you to wear it proudly and use it responsibly. I agree. Yes, it's a uh, it's a lot of responsibility that comes along with that badge. And you're representing us when you're out in the field. So if you're going to be throwing your own feces at somebody while wearing that badge, that is not a way to represent us. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That, that gets your badge removed. Um, well, let's put a bow on this. Handsome Aaron Airport, until next time. Jordan, until next time. Um, I love ice cream. I love frozen yogurt. I love gelato. Even seeing this unhinged man grab it with his hand, I'm still a little saddened that they threw all that ice cream away. I would have used a spoon and just kind of scooped around where he grabbed, threw that away, and I would have enjoyed the rest. No. I want some ice cream. I would now. have thrown it away. I would have thrown it away. The whole thing? Yeah, the what whole if, thing. What if it's tainted? Okay, think of no. So imagine this. There's a block of ice cream. It's two feet long, a foot wide, and a foot deep. So it's like a rectangle of ice cream. He takes his hand in the very front of the rectangle of ice cream and takes one scoop and walks out. You wouldn't like cut you know, the, the rectangle of ice cream in half and save the bottom half, you get rid of the whole yeah, two by tainted. one by one. It's, no, it's tainted. No, can't do it. Yeah. No. Okay. Sorry. Uh, and bus stop bone apart until next time. Having enjoyed the bear story very much and having, um, was it Andrew that called in uh, mm -hmm. and, and called you out on being a hypocrite? Mm -hmm. I think that's that's uh, enough for me. I'd like to call it a ceasefire as well, call off the wolves okay. and uh, lay down our arms and let us both dip our burnt hands into the cold gelato of friendship. Mm -hmm. I like it. I accept. Yes, I, I do too. I want to thank you for helping Aaron and I fulfill our mission to keep Canada weird. But if any one of you listening want to contribute to our work, we need all the correspondence we can get. If something weird happens in your area, or if you have any thoughts, theories, or opinions on anything we discussed tonight, we'd love to hear from you. But please, no more hate mail. The best way to reach us is by using the voice recorder that can be found at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. We're excited to hear from you. Now, I'm going to start wrapping this episode up, but before we part, I want to thank a few people. First, a big thanks to Aaron for sharing another evening with me and with you, the listeners of Nighttime. A big shout out to Unicole, the internet's favorite cult leader, who provides our intro and outro voiceovers, and Monty Data, who provides the outro version of O Canada. And then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you goes out to each and every one of you listening, as without your interest and your support, this show would be impossible. And on the topic of support, a special thank you goes out to the newest premium feed subscribers, Megan, Tara, and Victoria. Thank you for your generous support. And for anyone else out there who wants to support the show that way, a premium feed subscription costs just a couple dollars a month, and that money funds the creation of new episodes. But the premium feed will also give you those new episodes two days early, it'll give them to you ad-free, and it will give you access to a full back catalog of all prior nighttime episodes. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can go premium right now at nighttimepodcast.com slash subscribe. And if the premium feed isn't for you, but you still want to support the show, well, that's easy. Just share this episode on social media and tell all your like-minded friends that they should listen. Your support is very much appreciated. And until next time, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let us know if you see anything weird. Keep Canada Weird is written, hosted, and produced by the Nighttime Podcast.